Welcome to Foods Entertainment for my next review, which is the second film for my annual two-month Hoder Film Festival for 2024. Now, interesting enough about this one, um, this this particular film, a lot of people actually really did not like it all. And um, I think it's for the same, a, a lot of this is the same reason as this last film I reviewed, which is Abigail, is a lot to do with the slow burnness. I mean, once stuff actually happens in this movie, it gets pretty good. In fact, um, after just watching this a few minutes ago, um, I'm actually having to watch something that's not so creepy because once, because that, the, the creep factor really gets brought in full circle once he once it starts really starts to get going but with that said though the pg-13 rating really really ruins this movie a little bit for me because first off is a stephen king adaptation so it was adapted from a stephen king story and two it does some very dark things. So this this film would have been better if it was not held back and given an R rating. So let's go ahead and review the, reveal the title. I am reviewing 2023's The Boogeyman. It's based on a short story by Stephen King. All right, the plot synopsis. First off, I do not agree with the tap line here. It says the scariest Hoder film of the year. The scariest Hoder film of 2023 was Smile. Smile was the scariest Hoder film of 2023. Heads down. This has nothing on it. In this Hoder thriller from the mind of Stephen King, two sisters along with their therapist's father are reeling from their mother's death. When a desperate parent comes to their home, he leaves behind a terrifying entity that feeds on his victim's suffering. That does kind of, without giving much away of the plot, does kind of sum it up. When it comes to, um, the good man. Now, um, my opinion. I'm trying to make this one a little shorter than the last one. The last one was 15 minutes, but like I said, um, that was a complete rant. Now, this one still might be too, because I'm going to be ranting on this one a little as well. Um, but for different reasons. I put this one off. I put this one off because everybody and their household pets in the YouTube com community of reviewing films, especially horror films, Nobody had anything at all nice to say about this movie. So I put it off, I put it off, and I put it off. Abigail I wanted to see. I kind of knew what I was going into. I just didn't think that it was going to be nearly as ridiculously bad as it turned out to be. I thought it was going to be more like a grindhouse movie with, with you know, perks and funny stuff. Instead, this turned out to be a uh, time waster. The Boogeyman, I would say, is not a time waster. It's actually a pretty decent film. It just has a lot of problems. First, the PG-13 the PG rating. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, the very first scene in the movie, we see this freaking evil demonic entity kill a kid. And not to say any kid, like literally like a eight-month to like one-year-old fucking kid in this movie all right literally that's the first scene in the movie you have this boogeyman they call it the boogeyman um this demonic entity lurker or whatever you have you want to call it there's a phobic to light we see it terrifying a little little freaking kid in, the, in their fucking crib. And then kills them. That's the first scene in the movie you see. And this is PG-13. Now, that is probably, and unfortunately, 
unfortunately, that's probably the most um, R-rated sequence in the movie. But this tells you, they give you that, that big freak opening to this movie. That applies this is going to be a serious, crazy, horrific, and very uncomfortable movie to watch. That's the only uncomfortable thing in the movie. And that, that right there is his, big, his first big problem. They set it up to be a very uncomfortable horror film to watch. And then it turns out not to be. And all be an uncomfortable horror film to watch. And somebody who owns several Stephen King adaptations in his collection and has reviewed several of them on his channel, we all know that Stephen King adaptations don't do that. They don't. This is this this is quite literally the first one that's truly watered, watered down. This is watered down, watered down, watered down. And that right there, to me, is what the real problem with this movie is. Is watered. It's watered down. If they would have given this movie a rated R rating and went full out with this movie, it would have been a hell of a lot better. The um Second issue I have with the film is the slow burn. Literally, you want... Let's see how long this movie is, because I'm curious. Just run time, run time, run time. Where's the run time on this thing? Well, I guess we'll just have to take a look at the disc. You should tell me. 98 minutes. 98 minutes. <laughs> Tell me how much of a slow burn this movie is. It's a 98 minute movie, which means it's, it's like um, 1 hour and 38 minutes. Something like that. So it's less than an hour and 40 minutes long. It was such a slow burn, this movie felt like it was two and a half hours long. And... Um, when they finally start really doing the crazy sh shit, you know, all the, all, all the crazy stuff in the movie, um, you feel like you've been there forever watching the movie. But when it does go full circle and starts really picking up, it, it does have some pretty creepy atmosphere to it. Like I said... I'm actually watching an episode of uh, of Lucifer just to get over the creepiness. So yeah, this one did have some creepy moments in it. Now, would I say the scariest movie of the year? No. I wouldn't even put it in the top five scariest movies of 2023. I would say that um, Barbarian, although it was hated by a lot of people, I'm not one of them. Unfortunately, um, Disney won't release it on physical media. Shame on them. I can only see that one on streaming services. Um, Smile, which in my opinion is the best word of film of the year. And uh, Renfield. It was also very, very good. And I thought that Evil Dead Rides was very, very, very good as well. Um, those, in my opinion, are the best word of films. Of 2023. The Boogeyman isn't. But it definitely is creepy. One, once things started kicking up, it's a creepy-ass movie. For sure. Especially for a PG-13 film, but it just doesn't even live up to the PG-13 rating, in my opinion. I've seen PG-13 rated horror films that, that, that go to more uncomfortable places than this does. Like I said, only only part of the movie is uncomfortable to me is the, is the beginning of the film, where you, where you literally have a little infant he was terrified and then gets killed by this demonic entity. And when we find out what this entity actually does, it gets even more diabolical. Because, um, and like I said, they had the elements of making a good horror film with this. It being very diabolical, but they had to get this R rating. And they just decided not to do it. When I mean, you find out that this, this, this lurking demon entity, whatever it is, has been around for 
all time. It's been around for ever since the beginning of time. And um, af after after terrifies you, it actually consumes you. It eats you. So um, that's interesting, right there. And like I said, they they really could have made this a lot better if they went on a more of an R-rated, hold, no hold barred direction with the Boogeyman. Instead of giving it PG-13 um, rating and leveling out all the stuff that could have made it a better movie. And they spend too much time on the whole family dynamic of uh, loss in this movie. But I can't say I completely hate this movie. I mean, I I, I got what I wanted out of it. Um, again, um, just like Abigail, I got what I wanted out of that. But it's, it's not a movie that I can see myself watching over and over again. So don't expect that. Now let's talk about the quality. This film is presented in full HD, 1080, widescreen 2 dot. Is it 3, 5, or 3? Yeah, 2.35, which we don't see a 2.35 much. We, it's usually a 2.29 or 2.40, but no, this one is a 2.35 by 1 widescreen cinemascope. The bars are slightly smaller on the, on the top and bottom of the screen. They're not as big. So, yeah, and it has a 5.1 DTS HDMA sound presentation. And this makes sense because it went was released for the 20th Century Fox, which is now owned by Disney. So if you want any real quality, you're going to have to wait for a 4K if it ever comes out. And no doubt this film probably had Atmos in theaters, and it probably was re recorded in 4K, probably even higher resolution than 4K when it was made. But what we get is this Blu-ray. Maybe... Sony should buy 20th Century Fox back and put some good quality out. Disney should be ashamed of themselves for not doing their jobs right. Alright. It's not always the case. I mean, like, there's some that are actually good. But like I said, you have to have a 4K for it to be good. Sony didn't have to. All right, let's talk about the quality. It's a very film-looking movie. But it do, I do I got the sense of the fact that it's a very dark-lit movie. And I think that has a lot to do with the atmosphere. So we don't expect any like bright colors in this movie. It's kind of more, um, more contrasted and deeper-looking colors. It's almost like um, this was intended for HDR10 or something. But like I said, this is a Blu-ray, not a 4K. Now, my system, you can actually go to um, turning uh, option on on your boot on my Blu-ray player that actually allows it to actually be enhanced with HDR without actually having HDR. But I like to give you guys raw authentic reviews. I like to manipulate the picture, which is why when I watch a Blu-ray, I watch it in 2K, even though I can watch it in 4K. If the movie doesn't have HDR, high dynamic range, I don't manipulate the picture to where it does. I can, but I don't, because I want to give you an honest review of the quality of the film, and not manipulate the hell out of it. Now, if, and, um, I kind of do the same thing with the audio. But with the audio, I do actually use multi-channel enhancement because it makes sense. That makes sense to do. Because you can always tell the difference with that. But when it comes to video, you really want to watch it the way that it was intended to be watched based on the format you could buy the movie in. And that's always been the way I've been about it. Which is why I like the movies on widescreen. I don't like watching stuff in pen and scan, manipulated, full frame, 4x3, because it just takes 
away from the movie. The audio. Huh. Eh, this was a pretty typical, basic, effect-heavy, um, neutral-like horror film with 5.1 DTS HDMA. So uh, it's not overly really cool, but I like the design of the sound because they actually use the sound presentation of the movie as a character. Because this this uh, this lurking um, entity likes to use weird, bizarre, demonic voices, and it's all sneaking around you. Sometimes it's around you, sometimes it's in front of you, and the side of you, moving around the room. And just like last year, the best way to watch a horror film is to turn every single light off and have the only light in the room being your screen. And that's uh, that's what we have for watching horror films during um, a horror film festival. festival, which is what I'm doing now. So um, that's the way that is. Well, Boogie, Boogeyman, or D Boogeyman, or Stephen King's The, the Boogeyman, every time you want to go ahead and say it is, it's not 100% terrible, but it's not all that great either. But I would say I get this um, two stars out of four. Who says, check it out.